I would speak to you of a most horrid reproach to the name of Christian. Yea, a reproach to all men and women, to all reason and humanity. There is war in the world, and war undertaken by Christians. I mean by those that bear the name of Christ and profess to walk as he also walked. Now who can reconcile war? I will not ask who can reconcile it to religion or Christianity, but who can reconcile it to any degree of reason or common sense? But you ask, is there not a cause? Oh yes, there are numerous causes of war. Among the chief are these. The ambition of princes, or the corruption of their ministers, difference of opinion. Sometimes two princes make a war to decide which of them shall dispossess a third of his dominions. Sometimes a war is commenced because another prince is too strong. Sometimes because he is too weak. Sometimes our neighbours want the things we have, or have the things we want. And so both fight until they take ours or we take theirs. And there is another cause which drags on poor victims into the field of blood. It is a, a great phantom which stalks before them and which they are taught to call liberty. It is this which breathes into their hearts a stern love of war and thirst for vengeance and contempt of death. Real liberty, meantime, is trampled underfoot and lost in anarchy and confusion. But whatever the cause, let us calmly and impartially consider the thing itself. See, here are 40,000 men gathered together on this ground. What are they going to do? Well, here are 30 or 40,000 more at a little distance. Well, these are going to shoot them through the head or the body, to stab them and split their skulls and send most of their souls to everlasting fire as fast as they possibly can. Why so? What harm have they done to them? Oh, none at all. They do not so much as know them. But this king had a quarrel with this king, and so these are going to kill as many of those as they can in order to prove their king in the right. What an argument is this! And what a method of proof! What an amazing way of deciding controversies! But so it is, and oh what horrors attend upon it! The blood and wounds of thousands and thousands. The burning cities, ravaging and laying waste the country. For once the sword is drawn, where may it stop? Who can command it be put up in its scabbard and it will obey? Once the sword is drawn, upon whom may it light? What then, you ask, must we do? Do, my brothers and sisters? Why, what would we do if either our own or our neighbour's house were on fire? We would bring, if in our senses, no combustible matter to increase the flame, but water and a helping hand in order to extinguish it. Now apply this to the present situation. It is like a house on fire, and the devouring flame is already kindled, and many thousands of lives have fallen prey to its insatiable violence. Who that seriously considers this awful contest can help lament 
such an astonishing want of wisdom. Which means we are apparently unable to resolve the matter without bloodshed. Oh, how is wisdom perished from the wise? What a flood of folly and madness is broken in upon us. 